Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design a continuous beam using the RAM Elements Continuous Beam Detailing Module. Now, the Continuous Beam Detailing Module can design steel, reinforced concrete, wood, or cold form steel beams, both independently or in conjunction with a RAM Elements Main Application Model. When using the Detailing Module in conjunction with the Main Application, only the direct loading will be imported. The additional forces determined in the finite element analysis, such as the reactions due to the supporting members or shells, will not be imported into the detailing module. For this training today, we will be designing a continuous steel beam with a cantilever at one end, and we will be using the detailing module as an independent application. Since we're using it as an independent application, what you'll notice is that I've just launched RAM Elements and I'm in a completely blank file. To access the detailing module, I'm gonna to go to the Modules tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, select the Beams icon, and then navigate to the Continuous Beam Detailing Module. Now, since I am using this detailing module as an independent application, none of my geometry, loading, or load combinations made its way into the detailing module. So all of that needs to be manually entered here. The first thing I'm gonna decide is what type of system and what type of design code I will be using for my design. I will be designing a steel structure using the AISC 16 LRFD design standard. Next, I'm gonna enter the number of spans. I'm gonna enter three spans. For my particular model, my spans are not going to be of equal length. I'm going to enter the first span as 10 feet, and then the two additional spans as 20 feet each. We'll go ahead and click OK. Next, I'm going to determine which material and which section types I'm going to be using in my model. This is a continuous steel beam, so I am expecting that the same material in the same section size will be used for all three spans. Now RAM Elements does come with a complete database full of different types of sections including steel, concrete, and timber sections and cold form steel as well as sections that would be appropriate for those types of materials. For today's class I'm going to be creating a wide flange continuous steel beam. So I'm going to select the steel material from the United States database of A992 grade 50 and then I'm gonna find the steel section I would like to use. Today, I'm gonna to select a W12 by 19. Next, I can enter my restraint information. I'm gonna enter my restraints as pinned, and I'm going to put the cantilever end at the left end of the structure. And you can see that that last span now has removed its support. What you're also gonna notice is that anything written in red on your view window is editable. So if you would prefer to edit it graphically in this main window, you can just click on that particular parameter and it'll allow you to create that information graphically instead of in the data area if you so choose. Next, let's take a look at our dead load and live loading information. So I can enter magnitudes of point loads. I can enter distributed loads and apply moments along my member. I'm going to notice all of the units that are applicable for each spreadsheet. I can customize these units within the detailing module if I choose. So let's go ahead and enter our first dead load. So I'm going to enter negative 0.05 kips per foot. And I'm going to enter this as 100% of the length of the member. So I'm going to enter the percentage here, and I'm going to enter the distance of 100%. The magnitude for span number two, negative 0.05. I'm going to enter mine in a percentage, or I can enter distance, and I'm going to enter 100%. There. So let's go ahead and click OK and see what that yields for us.
Next, we're going to take a look at our loading information. Now, this detailing module allows you to enter dead load and live load for your system. It'll also automatically include the self-weight if you select this checkbox. Now, I can enter my loading information, dead load and live load, as either a concentrated load, a distributed load, or a moment in those two categories. I'm going to go ahead and enter a distributed load for both dead load and live load, and then I'm going to put a point load on the end of my cantilever. Let me first access the spreadsheet for the distributed load for dead load. I'm going to start by entering a magnitude of load, and I am going to give it a negative side to indicate it's a downward acting force. I'm going to enter my, my magnitude as negative 0.05 kips per foot. I know what the units are based on the top of this spreadsheet. And then I'm going to decide, do I want to enter it in distance or percentage? I'm going to enter mine for percentage, and I'm going to start it at 0%, so that's at the very start of the member. I'm going to enter my second magnitude, because this doesn't have to be a, a uniform load. It could be a trapezoidal load. So I'm going to enter my next magnitude. I will be doing a uniform load, so I'll enter negative 0.05 kips per foot. Again, I'll pick the percentage and say it's going to be 100% of the member. So this is magnitude at the starting end, and where is it starting? Magnitude at the ending end, where is it ending? Let's go ahead and click OK. And then I can see my dead load has now appeared on my system. Let's go ahead and also enter a live load. I'm going to enter this as negative 0.1 kips per foot. And again, I'm going to go the entire length of the member. In addition to that, I'm going to go ahead and enter a concentrated load at the end of my cantilever. So I'll enter 5 kips at, let's go with the distance. So when I don't have the percent checkbox selected, it gives me the option of entering it in feet. I'm going to go with 0 feet, 0 from the left-hand end of the structure. And here you can see my system. I actually want to put a negative sign in front of that to control the direction. I want a downward acting force. We do have the option to perform skip loading for your live load, so you can enter in a percentage there if you choose. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my load combinations. Now, I am performing a LRFD steel design. That's the steel design code that I created. Now, I can manually enter in my load combinations, or if I click on the Generate Load Combinations button, I will have access to all of the load combination generators that are installed with RAM elements. Here I'm going to select the LRFD Factored Load Combination Generator. And I'm going to repeat this process for my service loads. After you enter all your loading information, you're ready to move on to your design data. You can enter in an absolute deflection limit and a relative limit state for deflection. These will be in case you want to use deflection as a limit state for your steel design. And you can also enter in the bracing information. Of course, in this independent continuous beam application, we've only manually modified, modeled the steel beam. Any bracing that might exist on this member is not in the detailing module. So we can go ahead and tell the program if it is braced continuously or at discrete points throughout the design. Next, I'm going to go to the Home tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and take a look at my advanced options. I'm going to do this before I perform any optimization or design. Here I can see all of the different parameters I can enter. Most of them are related to concrete. So I'm just going to finish this off by clicking OK. Now that I've started this process, I'm ready to move on to the design stage. So let's go ahead and click on the Optimize icon. And the program will perform an optimization for us. Now, if we don't want to perform a full optimization, we can ask the program to just check, which means I'm only going to change members if they fail. I can include deflections in that check as well. 
So let's take a look at what we have. In the strength combinations, we have our one steel beam. We are checking them against our design load combinations, and we are giving them a stress ratio limit of 1.0. If you would like to stay on the more conservative side of your design, you can lower this to a more conservative value. Next, let's take a look at our deflection limits. We're highlighting our service load combinations, and we're saying we want to adhere to no more than L over 360. Now, if we would like to control the size that we would like to use, we can go ahead and create a collection the same as you would in your RAM elements main application. If we're ready to perform the optimization, we can go ahead and click OK and ask the program to run through the list. Now here it looks like our original section had failed based on strength and it's suggesting a W10 by 26 instead. So let's go ahead and click OK and you can see it's updated our size. Now if we didn't want to perform an optimization, if say we just wanted to perform a check, let's go ahead and change this section size. Let's check a W12 by 26 instead. So maybe we don't want to perform an optimization. We want to check to see if a W12 by 26 works. I can click on the check icon to perform a check. Now at the bottom of your screen, you're going to notice that the status bar has been updated. If the status bar is indicating a green traffic light, it means that your section passed with no failures or warnings. A yellow light would indicate that the code check passed, but it may have produced some warnings during the calculation that you should investigate and a red indicator light would mean that it would fail. Let's go ahead and return to our initial section so we can see what that looks like. So I'm guessing a 12 by 19 is insufficient. You can see here I have my red status light. So we can use this for steel beam design. We can use this detailing module as either an optimization process or as a checking process. So we can optimize or do trial and error. Let's go ahead and repeat that optimization. and then check it. Okay. Once you're done with your calculations, you can also take a look at your detailed report for that particular member, and you can see all of the design checks that were performed. Finally, before we're ready to exit out of this area, we can go to the diagrams page. You can review your shear, moment, and deflection diagrams for each of your individual load cases and load combinations. Now, if you'd like to save this file, you can go ahead and click File Save and save this and return to it at a later time. If you're ready to return to RAM Elements, you can select File Exit and return to your main application. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.